When you Google, what is the world's busiest bridge? The answer you get back is the George Washington Bridge over the Hudson River. Um, and this is based on the fact that it carries more vehicles than apparently any other bridge in the world, about 290,000 a day, which is impressive in its way. But this assumes that the number of vehicles you're moving is the most important measure, when really it's about how many people can you move. Welcome to City Nerd, where top 10 lists are really kind of just a gateway drug to thinking about all the things that make cities so interesting. Go ahead and click the thumb, the subscribe button, the bell, or any combination of the three if you're so inclined. It all gooses the algorithm, gets more people to the channel so we can get some conversation going down in the comments. So when you think of the most iconic bridges and tunnels in the United States, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge and the Bay Bridge, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Tunnel, the Brooklyn Bridge, and the George Washington Bridge. They all move a lot of vehicles, but it turns out that they don't even crack the top 10 in terms of how many people they move. So the spoiler alert here is that it just turns out that trains and buses are way, way more space efficient when it comes to moving people than cars are. So before we get into the top 10, let's do a little definition of terms. Um, I want to look at bridges and tunnels. So essentially facilities that convey people across bodies of water. So I'm not looking at like tunnels under streets. No, the Lexington Avenue, uh, the four, five and six in New York is obviously very busy, but I'm not considering that a tunnel in the, in the sense that we're talking about today. And for this list, we're gonna look at a time of day when the system is under the most stress. So we're looking at the AM peak hour, which is, to be honest, is the time of day for which I was able to find the most data. The numbers we're gonna look at include people in cars and trucks, but also includes subways, commuter rail, buses, and then in at least one case, people on bikes. So let's get into it. Number 10 is the Steinway Tunnel running under the East River. Um, this connects Long Island City and Midtown Manhattan, Grand Central, um, via the, the Flushing Line, uh, number seven. In the AM peak hour, this subway tube carries 24,459 people. Number nine is the Cranberry Tunnel, also under the East River. This connects downtown Brooklyn to lower Manhattan. This is the IND 8th Avenue line. The ANC carries 25,057 passengers in the AM peak hour. So one theme you're gonna see right away here is your tunnel or bridge has to carry at least 24,000 people in order to even make this list, which is about the level of a single track subway to given a 12 car train with typical peak hour crowding and running about 18 to 24 trains per hour, which pretty much all of these tunnels are in that range. Number eight, the 60th Street Tunnel, again, under the East River, connecting Long Island City and Midtown. This is the Broadway line, the NWR, and it clocks in at 25,384 passengers. Number seven, <laughs> we're still on the East River. We're still on single track tubes. This is the 14th Street Tunnel, the BMT Canarsie line, the L train connecting Williamsburg to Union Square. Carries 26,461 passengers. Number six, and this is the only time we're leaving New York, this is the Transbay Tube carries the BART between East Bay and downtown San Francisco. Near as I can tell, um, it maxes out at 27,000 people in the peak hour. You know, intuitively, you would think, oh, the Bay Bridge carries a lot of traffic and probably mixes in some, some buses as well. But it turns out it barely serves half the number of people that the, the Trans Bay tubes do. Number five, now we're into commuter rail. Um, this is the tracks underneath the Hudson River uh, connecting New Jersey to Penn Station. Um, so Amtrak and New Jersey Transit trains. And these carry 27,223 people in the AM peak hour. Number four is the Amtrak Long Island Railroad tracks underneath the East River. I believe the common denominator here is these are double tracks coming in from New Jersey and 
Long Island and then across the Harlem River as well, as you'll see next. The Amtrak Long Island Railroad Tunnel carries 33,540 people in the AM peak hour. Number three is the Harlem River Lift Bridge, which carries the Metro North commuter trains into Manhattan. And these carry 35,562 folks into Grand Central Terminal in the AM peak hour. Now we get into the top two, which are probably the most interesting. Uh, number two is the Lincoln Tunnel. I had no idea how many more people it carries than the Holland Tunnel. You know, I thought they were kind of equivalent. Turns out the Lincoln Tunnel, it's got reversible lanes. It's got a dedicated bus lane in the AM peak hour. And it carries, according to the data, 3,663 people by car and truck and a whopping 36,978 people by bus. Is this really true? A single bus lane carrying 10 times as many people as three general purpose lanes combined? I mean, I guess I don't disbelieve it, but you're saying a dedicated bus lane carries 50% more people than a subway tunnel? I mean, I'll just say that seems a bit counterintuitive. Anyway, a total of 40,641 people in the AM peak. Before we get to number one, I don't really have honorable mentions so much as I have other bridges and tunnels that kind of occurred to me that could make this list, but just don't quite get there. So one is the Rosslyn Tunnel in DC, which serves um, several lines on their metro system. It's a it's a busy facility. It's running kind of at max capacity, but the thing is, DC Metro only runs like eight car trains, so you're never gonna get that 24,000 number until you add this four extra cars. And I looked at Chicago. Chicago isn't, I mean, it's sort of a city of bridges. I mean, in terms of, you know, the Chicago River. And there are a couple of bridges that carry multiple L lines, so the Wells Street Bridge and the Lake Street Bridge, but the numbers just don't get anywhere near that 24,000 threshold. I guess the, the dishonorable mention here is just to go back to the George Washington Bridge and really look at the type of footprint this facility has, how many lanes it has. It has seven lanes running across eastbound and the amount of space that's required for all the different off-ramps and connections, which if you're a traffic engineer, it's what you really want so that you can get uninterrupted flow onto connecting roads. So you can get as close as possible to some theoretical ideal of 1,900 to 2,000 vehicles per lane per hour, which none of these bridges or tunnels actually do because there's always some traffic signal somewhere downstream that's backing cars up onto a bridge. In fact, if you look at all the vehicular travel lanes coming into the city, except for the Lincoln Tunnel bus lane, it averages 1,750 people per lane in the AM peak hour. That's not vehicles per hour per lane, which would be a lower number. So really, you'd need a George Washington bridge with like 15 lanes in each direction to even make this list. And number one, it's a good number one, it's the Manhattan Bridge. It's super multimodal, so it's got four tracks on it. So you're surfing the B, the D, the N, and the Q between downtown Brooklyn and the lower Manhattan. It's got several travel lanes for cars and trucks. It moves bikes. It moves 42,279 people in the AM peak hour. And the breakdown is 2,574 people by car and truck, 19,378 on the express subway track, 20,215 on the local subway track, and 562 bicyclists. Obviously this was taken, as all the New York data was taken for a single day, they used a, a fall day AM peak hour. Just think about 42,729. At that 1,750 people per lane per hour number, that would be like 24 Manhattan bound lanes. I mean, where would you even land 24 lanes in lower Manhattan? And where would you even park all those cars? So you can really see why New York couldn't be New York without the subways and why for other US cities struggling with growth and mobility, high capacity transit is really the path forward and not a bunch of new tunnels underground for private 
personal vehicles. Anyway, let me know if there's something I didn't think of. If there's some secret bridge or tunnel somewhere in the United States that you think probably could have made this list and I just didn't see it. There's some mystery tunnel or bridge in the US that has 24 lanes in each direction. I'm sure Textile is working on it. Um, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, turn on the bell notification when you sub. Um, it all gets more people here to join in the conversation. And as always, thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.